Welcome to another episode of Disruptors in the Culture. I am Amira Smith, and I have my awesome co-host, Joshua Meekins, with me. How everybody doing? Um, today, we are blessed with the pleasure of having Aaron Ashley Simon, host, producer, creator, gamer, co-owner of XSET, and close friend of mine on today's episode of Disruptors in the Culture. Um, for those of you who may not know who Erin is, Erin has been in the game for a minute and has established quite a name for herself and her brand. And she hasn't always been this, you know, famous figure that we all see in commercials and things like that all the time. She used to be uh, my, my, my friend who would just play soccer and talk about our journalism dreams all the time. So um, I'm very happy to, you know, have her on the show today. Erin, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it means the world. Um, yeah. For real, I, I think one of the things that we want to do is, um, you know, I want you to tell the, the world a little bit, a little bit about who you are and what you do from your own words. Because I think people see it from the outside, but I think you can give them the best inside scoop. Yeah, absolutely. Gosh, I'm famous now. Sheesh, <laughs> I, I still don't feel like I made it. You know, it's uh, there's so much I want to do. But uh, hi, everyone. My name is Aaron. I am like you were saying. I do everything. Uh, it's so funny. <laughs> Whenever someone was like, what do you do? I'm like, <laughs> take a seat because it's going to be a long <laughs> one. Um, but yeah, for me, like I've journalism and storytelling has always been at the core of everything that I do that as well as just giving back. Um, those have been kind of two core elements for my entire journey uh, leading up to where I am currently in esports and gaming. And uh, it's, uh, it's been, wow, it's been 11 years because it was around the time, Josh, that you and I met when we were about 18 years old, 17 years old, around yeah. there. That was when my journey in just the whole media and journalism space started. And it was... There was kind of like a parallel because I feel like the trajectory of my career and that growing was also aligned with the trajectory of my own personal growth mm -hmm. and my own personal journey into self-discovery. Yeah. Um, and so it, it's just been really kind of interesting just to see all of that. Um, and so, you know, I would love to be able to to kind of talk a little bit, a little more in depth about that. Cause I, I feel a lot of times when we talk about our work journeys, our successes or anything like that, I think there's not, there's not so much a focus on how the, there is a correlation between not only your personal success, but yeah. there's a correlation between you improving as a human being, loving yourself, feeling more confident and that the energy and how you feel inside and how you improve that it does help with you becoming more successful. And so I don't really get to talk about that a whole lot, uh, but I'm willing to dive anywhere in yeah. that 11 year span that you want me <laughs> to leading up to where it is now. Yeah. I mean, so start, how about we start with that? I mean, that's a great place to start is talk mm -hmm. about um, that personal journey, starting from yeah. them. You knew you were interested in journalism. You knew you, yeah. you played a sport. You were a collegiate athlete yeah. in soccer. Yeah. She's the, rock people on the on the field so <laughs> even with that like talk about how that you know how that definition of yourself has grown even through maybe your college journey and um your first uh, i guess you could say adulthood journey so it's interesting for as much that soccer and being an athlete was my identity it never really when i stopped it never really impacted me because i was always like preparing for life after that yeah. and what I was passionate about in terms of that storytelling I was already starting like I was already doing internships like I did an internship at the Wall Street Journal and Dow Jones and ended up doing work there like I was already kind of at that point where I understood that soccer was not going to be my forever and that I had basically bigger bigger plans in the horizon and so but I will say that like that life of me being a soccer player um really set the discipline for myself um 
and especially with a career in uh, the industry that I work in where you're, you're constantly judged for something, right? You're constantly evaluated for how good or poor or whatever you do, right? Or having to overcome mental obstacles or overcoming working with people that you don't like. Cause I'm not, I'm not going to front. I did not like some of the, my teammates. I did not. I'm not even going to lie about that. But at the end of the day, it's like, as long as you have respect for each other, that was the most important thing. And the common goal was to win, right? It's the same thing in the workforce, right? You're not going to like everyone that you work with, but as long as you have respect for each other and you have that common goal of succeeding, that's the most important thing. So soccer really established a, some of these fundamental things that were preparing me for the work life that really set me um, on a, on, on a path earlier than most people do. Mm-hmm. And there is a little bit of an identity crisis when you stop playing a sport, like for your, you know, a sport that you played pretty much your entire life, right? right? Like everything was driven by soccer for me, but I had a less of that just because one, I ended a year earlier. I didn't play my senior year. Cause I really wanted to focus in on what was next. Um, two, I can't lie. I wasn't really a big fan of my coach at the time. So I was just kind of like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dealing with this anymore. Um, and uh, I was also dealing with the injury too, that just wasn't going away. So I was just like, you know what? And this, I just want to have fun and I just want to relax before I got to, you know, actually, actually be an adult, you know, <laughs> when you graduate. Right. So, uh, but I think it's been, it's been interesting because the hard work and the discipline that I've set and just these learning points within my athletic career was never really the thing that I had, I struggled with the most. Uh, mostly it was the personal side of things that I struggled with a little bit more. Um, and it's funny because actually Josh, when we met, that was like the beginning of me. That was the beginning of my personal journey. It was literally our senior year of high school. That was the start. I remember we had a very in-depth com- personal conversation and I, you were one of the first people I opened up to about some things that I was struggling with and uh, that was the beginning of like mm. from point a to point z okay so okay you're you're in high school and it's funny because you're like you're talking about discipline a lot right and that's like the number one key to successful like being a successful person so about discipline um but I could imagine in high school and like you said being a, a young athlete your whole life you're so disciplined and you see some classmates who just, they don't have to worry about discipline for the most part because they just do what they feel. They're not on regimens, diets, nothing, no, no training schedules. And you say, you know what, give me a year to just like, let me just chill because I'm about to really have to be out there in the world. Was this the time that you discovered that you wanted to go into journalism or was journalism always something that like, even when you're a kid, you're like, I know I'm a soccer player, but I really do like that. You know, you see someone on TV doing journalism. Like when, when did that awaken for you? So I kind of stumbled into that. So funny enough, what a lot of people don't know is if I, I started a blog when I was in high school and that blog was what set me on the course of, of heading towards journalism and media. If I didn't do that blog, there were two jobs that I probably was gonna end up having. It's uh, a, a job within forensic science or it would have been a job within uh, kinesiology. So just the, the body movement and everything like that, PT, all that. So uh, I, cause I was always fascinated about human behavior, human body. Like even now I'm, I'm so fascinated with that stuff. Um, even a little bit of psychology probably would have been added into that. But what I found so fascinating was when I had this blog, I was interviewing like high school basketball players, top high school basketball players. And they were giving me like, information that they wouldn't give people at like ESPN and Fox. And I mean, part of it was I was a young lady around their age. So, you know, but they also respected me. And so they would give me exclusive information. And the blog that I had, it was called Box of Mess. It pretty much blew up to the point where like people from ESPN, CBS Sports, Fox Sports were reading my blog. And I'm like a kid in high school getting this information. And so over time, I realized like, hey, I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy hearing their stories. Like I really enjoyed it. And I've always been someone who's enjoyed learning. So what better way to learn than to like hear about someone's story, hear about their past, hear about just their challenges, their obstacles and things like that. And so I realized like, hey, this is the course I want to take. Like I want to go towards the journalism route. And so um, I made that decision and it was just something that I just 
fell into in high school. It wasn't anything that like I always dreamed of doing. It wasn't anything that I planned. Like I was a, I was a, a solid writer, but like I never thought about like, hey, I want to go this route. Um, and I, And it's funny because I was much more quieter and I was a little more of an introvert um, and a little more shy mm-hmm. back then compared to now. Um, and so it was just something where it was just like, I found journalism and then, but journalism helped me find myself a little bit too. So that's kind of how I even stumbled into this, this space in this area. So what made you start the blog? Was it like a school assignment or something or... <laughs> No, I just wanted to talk about things that I wanted to talk about. And I also just felt like, uh, you know, I felt like back then, um, which for kids now, it's, it's so amazing how freeing it is to be different. But back then, we all know, like, you couldn't really be different. And especially, like, as a woman and, like, the fact that I was I love video games, like, there were just certain things I couldn't talk to my friends about. So I was like, I want to write about it, right? At least I have an outlet of where I can share it. Because it was, it was around the MySpace days, right? So yeah. I want to have a platform where I can just c- talk about the things that I want to talk about without feeling judged, without criticism, without being someone saying I'm weird. Like, I just want to have a space for myself. And that was it. It was the blog was for myself. And then I realized, like, oh, wow. It's just cool. I want to talk about music. I want to talk about sports. Like I've always been very multifaceted. I always had passions in so many different spaces. So I just wanted an area where I can just literally just let my thoughts out. It's, it's really cool to, to, to know that like being you being the person that you are, you talked about before, like holding uh, your own space in these environments. So being multifaceted, understanding multiple things and being able to stand in those spaces and say, I feel confident doing these things. And back to Erin's point, like a lot of the time she did have these big, you know, companies coming to see the news that she was breaking. Like one of the, I remember being there when you were talking to Carl Anthony Towns the first time and like having that conversation, if people don't know, he's the the center for the uh, Minnesota, Minnesota Timberwolves right now. And um, just, you know, you being able to say, this is the story, I'm going to write it and everybody coming to you for that news, which was which was major at the time and seeing you kind of had that excitement was cool to kind of see you shine in that light. So so now that you know that, okay, journalism is this path, you're having these moments of self-discovery, you're now an adult, soccer is no more. Um, how are you navigating this new world of, okay, I know I love sports, I know I love music, um, I'm kind of just telling stories, but what, what, how, how do you know what direction, what step to take next? Honestly, I had no idea. <laughs> I, uh, it was, it was a little bit of trial and error because around the time that I was pursuing this career in the journalism space, it was around the time where it was kind of like the beginning of like the layoff periods for a lot of print digital journalists and like that kind yeah. of transitional period that was happening in media. And so my mentor at the time, um, so one of my mentors, he's been my mentor for like, my gosh, like 10 years. Uh, It's Mike Hill. He's a broadcaster. Many people have seen him on ESPN, Fox Sports, all that, right? And um, through him, I was able to talk to other journalists. That was, uh, I was able to talk with like, for example, Jamel Hill back when she was over at ESPN. Um, uh, There's a few others that I spoke to and they were all just like, they were honest. They were like, it's hard to climb up the ladder as a black woman in the traditional sports space right now. And you may want to, and print and digital journalism is in a very, is, is going to be in a transitional period. So you may want to find a, another path or a unique way. Um, and they're honest about it and, and they're right. You know, I think that like, I mean, times are changing because the kind of content that's coming out now and just the era we're in is different. But back then it was very traditional. It's very linear. It was very in one way. Right. And so I was like, okay, cool. So I transitioned out and I was like, Hey, I really love music. I want to talk about music. Um, and then that's how eventually, um, you know, one of my other mentors and friends, Rob Markman, he was the one that, that got me introduced to, to people at revolt TV, which was Diddy's, uh, is Diddy's television network. And so eventually I made my way over there. Um, and like, it's funny. I, I didn't know where I was going or what I was doing until like I was till maybe like 26, 27. I think that's when I was like, okay, I tried all these different things. I think I know what I want. Right. And so 
but it literally took me just trying different industries, trying different positions, seeing what I liked, seeing what I didn't like, and then making that decision where it was like, all right, now I feel like I'm on the path that I wanted to be on. Now I feel like I'm, I'm doing what I want to do, but it took me a lot of trial and errors to really know what I'm doing, what I wanted to do and where I wanted to go ultimately. That's crazy. And it's, it's interesting. Cause I think like, I think you kind of created a path. I don't think there, I, I kind of felt like, and that's the thing of like, when Josh was like, you know, Aaron Simon, I'd like to have him on a show. And I think one thing we, we have our friends on, it's like people that we like really know or, um, but I Googled you and right away I said, oh, she's singular, you know? I don't think there's many people, like you kind of forged that path. So you're like, I didn't know where I was, I didn't know where, but it's like, you were kind of exploring uncharted terrain overall and what you were doing because you know, I grew up with a, a gamer brother, you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, being a young black gamer before the internet, and then when the internet came and forging those paths, there really wasn't much community around, you know, it, around black gamers, period. But then gamers themselves, it's kind of like, you know, that's, the, the God bless the internet, because that was the thing that unified everybody. And you can, you know, depending on your hours, you could be in, to in tournaments with people in Japan, like, you know? but it's such a niche market. Um, so you, you, like you said, you, like they were telling you as a black woman, it's really, really hard. And if you find your unique path, um, what was that? Like, do you remember a moment where that catalyst came where you were like, oh yeah, this is it. Like, I haven't seen it. I'm going to join this love, my love of already sports and journalism, but also gaming. When was it that you just had this like, I guess the aha moment of like, I need to join all of this together because I am not, I, I am as a person, I'm not being served and I know other people can use this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that was, that happened after I had a very like big transitional moment. Um, 2018, uh, the company I was working for had a mass layoff. Uh, I also got laid off literally the day before I had hip surgery. I was out for six months uh, and then had to start looking for jobs towards the end of six months, even though I wasn't fully recovered. So, but luckily my friend, uh, Kyle Harvey, he got me working at a company and um, I started covering traditional sports again via there. But him and I would always have conversations about video games because he's a gamer himself. And when he found out that I'm a gamer, we used to have some like really really interesting conversations just about how like for example like grand theft auto radio station was the spotify playlist before spotify and just like on um, the impact of certain games like the def jam fighting games and all and even like street fighter and just like we would have all these kind of conversations but we would have it from the context of culture and so eventually he was the managing editor at the company that i was working for and he was like hey why don't you write about this like he was like you have some really interesting points and thoughts and things like that. So the moment that happened was there were a few pieces that I wrote about that really popped off. Uh, the Grand Theft Auto one did. Um, I wrote a piece about Megan Thee Stallion and how um, people have to stop questioning Black women's fandom when it comes to anime and gaming, uh, considering that we have been very instrumental in a part of these cultures for a very long time. Um, and so, and then she, she ended up sharing that piece. And, it, and, and so there were several pieces where I was like, wow, like people really like this. And I love writing about this. And that was kind of like my aha moment where I was like, I finally have something and I finally have a lane where it's something that I love doing and it's something that other people love reading and hearing about. And it was finding that sweet spot. And so when I found it, I kind of, I went for it. And I would really like sit with my friend Kyle and like ideate like what I could talk about. If there's an anniversary, like really figuring out like, okay, what's, what's a unique angle I can do? Um, and then it was from there that I had the first opportunity to, to cover esports. I, I, so I've been someone who's like, I've watched a little bit of like the fighting game tournaments and everything like that. And uh, the first uh, esports league that I covered was the NBA's esports league. Um, and it was when it first came out. And so um, 
even with that, it's funny. Like, I think I was one of the people that broke a story about like the fact that the players got fined for like trash talk and stuff. Like, it was just something like unique like that. And so, um, I realized like, oh, this is something that I enjoy doing. This is something I enjoy loving. I knew I wanted to like write about it and cover it. I didn't realize about like being a broadcaster in this space until it was a little bit later on that I realized that. And then once I got a hold of that, I was like, oh yes, this is it. This is what I want to do. So even the popularization, like you were just saying before, of like black women gaming, women of color gaming, loving anime. I feel like, as you said before, like there, we have a lot of people now who are, or, or, or pushing that narrative. I mean, even yourself, like you're, you're pushing that narrative being like this, it's okay to, I can love these things. And we are, we are the trendsetters of these things. Cause I know you recently wrote an article, women are steering a ship we call esports that I did check out cause I'd be supporting my friends. But um, I wanted you to give you a second to like talk a little bit more about that. Like, like that, that is, that is true. It's, 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 it's a real statement. And just dig into it a little bit. I'm going to let you dig into that. Yeah, of course. So obviously, like, the industry is male-dominated, and it's male-dominated in various different forms, right? But what a lot of people don't know is, like, the industry is changing. Um, There's a lot of executives. There's a lot more CEOs that are women. Mm -hmm. A lot of decision makers are women. There's a lot of women who lead a lot of departments at some of the biggest esports organizations, and there are also a lot of women that control the dollars, right? So... That it's, it's a changing industry. And, and I say all that because there's still toxicity. There's still sexism. There's still racism in the industry because there's anonymous people. And anonymous people still think that they're courageous behind keyboards when they're actually cowards. And so with that, though, people don't, there's, there's a lot of women that people just don't know about because one, they don't search. Or two, they're not privy to it. I'm privy to it, you know, because I've been able to develop relationships with people behind the scenes, develop relationships with CEOs, develop relationships with with publicists, develop relationships with so many different people. So I know there's a lot more women in these important roles that people don't really know about. And that's why I did that list and I I did that op-ed because it's like, yeah, you know, things are changing, but for those who don't realize, like don't get it twisted. Like there are women who are leading the charge in esports behind the scenes and who are being hired in positions that are literally responsible for the next wave of pro players, the next wave of content creators, or the next project that gets funded, right? So it was kind of my way of saying like, don't be sexist, right? Yeah. Like, you know, because they're women, they're literally leading this stuff. So it's not like how it was before where it was really, really very much a boys club, right? Or a men's club, but it's changing. And it's good that it's changing, right? It's the, Ultimately, any industry is going to improve when there's diversification of leadership, of thought, of personnel, of staff, of creators. It's always going to thrive. And so with that transition that we're seeing in the industry, we're seeing that transition of people behind the scenes. And so it was very important for that to be highlighted and to conveyed and to be conveyed, excuse me. And so that's why I wanted to point it out because my friend was telling me this. Over time in this industry, I've kind of become the person who says the things that people may not be ready to say or are always been that person. <laughs> I know it's the Aries in me. I can't help it. But they always were like, Aries, you say the things that everyone wants to say, but they can't say because maybe there's they're you know they're contracted with an org or a league, uh, or you know, they just it, they just don't have the platform, or maybe they just don't want to say it, right? I'm not afraid to say these things, and so. Um, that's why I wanted to make that statement where it's like, yo, I know there are a lot of people who think they know what's going on in esports or they don't, you know, they always want to say something about women or anything. Well, sorry, I hate to burst your bubble, but more and more women are becoming leaders in this industry, whether you like it or not. So you either get on board or you get off. That's, that's the kind of feeling I have. Like I have that feeling in general where it's like, yo, if you're gonna be racist and sexist, Companies need to be okay with just kicking these people out. Like, yes. don't take their dollars, right? It's okay if we lose a few dollars now to gain more later on. Like, we have to be okay with standing up and saying, no, we're not going to tolerate this crap anymore. I'm surely not going to tolerate it. Like, I keep, t- like, you, you, I mean, I don't, have, I don't have to explain to you guys, but it's like, other people have to say, you guys have no idea how many times I do a broadcast and I constantly see the N word or how many times I do a broadcast but because I have short hair, I'm now a lesbian, right? It's crazy. It's like in the black culture, short hair is part of our femininity. It's a part of our identity. But then you go to other people who are like, oh my gosh, like 
she hates men. What? Does that have short hair and a lower voice? Like, it's just, there's so many things that people need to be taught and experience and, 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 and be kind of exposed to. So I want to expose this component saying like, while y'all are being crazy in the chat, there's women who are literally the heads of, of VPs of your fair esports orgs. So y'all need to like relax a little bit. So I, that, that kind of was like the feeling that I had. I just had a little, like, you know, I just had a moment where I just was like, listen, I'm just going to talk my shit and I'm going to highlight these amazing women at the same time. So that I really felt like that was so important to do. And also there's a lot of women that do not get enough credit. There's a lot of people of color that do not get enough credit for the amazing things they do. So I was like, you know, this is the perfect time that I feel like I, I could do that for, you know, for now, for later and, and, and continue to do it. And, and let people know that these women are not outliers. Like you said, they're steering the ship. So they're not to be tolerated or to be celebrated and they are calling the shots. So behave or get out. Like just, that's that simple. But that's um, the community that you are awakening that people might not have known was such a force. Because yeah, when black women in anime, like if we go to like, you know, Otacon or any, any of the cons, any of the conventions where Black, you'll see a lot of black women there and people will be like, I didn't know that so many people were into this. And it's like, because there aren't, as we say, there aren't journalists covering it, but then you come and you explode the space and you're just like, hey, listen, let's, let's really talk about who's really here, who's really spending their dollars. And it's important to wake these companies up to, hey, when you have these young black women who are doing content around this, do brand partnerships with them. Stop acting like, oh, they're just an outlier. I don't know if the money is worth it to like partner with them. Yeah. So I think also, I'm sorry, I don't mean to break you up, but also it. like, let's keep it a buck. A lot of these different subcultures and cultures were influenced or created by black people. So why are we so surprised that we're a part of it? Like for example, the house music, electronic. Come on. Came from us, man. The blues, jazz, hip hop, rock stem from us. Like, come on. Like, it's just like, it, it just always blows my mind when, when people are just so surprised. I mean, look, a lot of people don't know the engineer who revolutionized video games with interchangeable cartridges. So basically like the cartridges or the CDs or like how you're able to put a game in and take it out. Mm -hmm. A black man made that. Jerry Lawson. If it wasn't for that invention, it would not, it, we, we would not have gotten to the point that we are in gaming. It's just too often though, like once again, they don't get credit. Yeah. And we all know why in various different forms. And so I, for me, it's like, I will always do what I can to shed a light on the underserved community, shed a light on, on those that just don't get enough love and attention because I know how it feels. I've had moments and times where people didn't give me credit or stole my ideas or like, I never want, the, I don't want that to happen to other people in this industry. So that's why I have no problem speaking up and being honest and, and really shedding a light on people. Cause that's, is it's not cool it's definitely not cool and especially it's not cool when there are various different content creators and people of color and gamers uh who are disabled and all these stuff who are doing amazing things but you know, there's other people that get a lot of limelight and attention and they just bring toxicity to the industry like no i'm i'm, I'm good off of that so with all the great advice you got with people saying hey as a black woman find your own space or uh, find a differentiator. Do, do you, I'm, I'm pretty sure, right? This is like, I know you're probably like, come on girl, like really, come and say, well, what struggles have you like, like things that really stand out where you were like, I didn't expect this to come along with being a black woman in this space or something that almost like you, it was like unbelievable, I guess, because it's like, as black people, we, we, we expect the struggle. We expect being told no, we expect being underestimated. Was there anything that you were just like, what? Like it was a little mind blowing that you couldn't believe that you had the face. Yeah. When I cut my hair and like the ridiculous comments and feedback that I got, like, I was like, what? Cause I've had long hair my entire life. I've really? never had problems with that. I never had problems with judgment of my appearance when I had long hair. But the second that I got short hair, oh, now all of a sudden it's a problem. I was like, I haven't changed. My face hasn't even changed since I was like, seven years old so like if for me like when i made the decision and that was actually part of my my decision to 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 make myself stand out and be different it was because everyone in the broadcast space has long hair or blonde hair or something like that so i was just like i'm just gonna cut my hair 
So I did that as a way where it's like, I, that was something that I could change to stand out without changing myself. And ever since then, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, she's a man or she's a lesbian or da 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 da. And I'm like, what? Cause that was that cup? What? <laughs> it was just, it was so mind blowing. I never, I never ever dealt with that, nor did I ever think that was gonna be a thing. But it also just shows you that there. There are people and men who want to, and not all men, but there are men, some men, who want to police women's femininity and who want to police people because they don't look like what they want. Mm. But what I tell people is, I'm not here to look good for you. I'm here to do my job. And if you don't want to look at me, then turn your screen off like, I, or go somewhere else. Like, I'm not going to change something just because you're uncomfortable. And, and, but over time, as I got more, you know, comfortable in my skin, it's just like, I realized that there's just a lot of people who constantly project their own insecurities and their own problems onto other people. And I've had everything. It, and it's crazy because when I had long hair, I was told by certain companies and it's funny because those same companies have now worked with me. Right. But I was told by companies, I didn't basically fit the mold, right? I didn't have the aesthetics. Cut my hair, now they're okay with it. And now some viewers are like, oh my God. Like, so it's just like, you can't win at the end of the day. And that's why I was like, I made a decision. I'm like, I'm just gonna be happy because someone's gonna say something. Even if I had long hair, someone's gonna say something because I'm black. So I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to do what I love. And then I started having fun with it. I started dyeing my hair, crazy colors. I was just like out here and- uh but it's funny because over time, I'm I became recognizable because I was like, the I was like, oh, that's the woman with the silver hair, the short hair. That's the storm looking girl. Like it was just like something like that. So, um, so I never I never had to deal with that, and I never understood how the differentiating factor in broadcast between short and long hair. It's something that people determines like what is feminine, what is right, what is of fits the mold and all that stuff but I was just like you know what I'm gonna be me I'm gonna do me and whether you accept it or not and I think that's what people liked about me and that's why people want to work with me because I don't try to be anything else other than myself I mean that that yeah that's 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 major especially when you're talking about you know becoming or struggling with your identity in the beginning of your journey and then you know becoming who you are and not being afraid to express that at this point. Um, I always say, cause I'm, I'm gonna transition a little bit to here too. Cause um, before anybody in mainstream media was talking about ownership, 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 Aaron was in my ear <laughs> at the age of like 17 or 18, like <laughs> all these people are doing this, but you gotta own what you have. You gotta own it. If you own it, they can't take your idea. And where, where'd that has, come from? Like before we even get into your, your where'd that come from? <laughs> from like a 17 year old? Uh, <laughs> my mom. Uh, my mom worked in corporate America and she was always just like, ownership is one of the most important things to have because she was like a lot of people or a lot of, uh, not necessarily a lot in terms of everyone, right? But there are a lot of people, there are a lot of companies that she was like, that want your ideas, who want your ideas? And um, she was like, you always got to protect you and you always got to protect your ideas and you always got to protect your value and mm -hmm. she's like that starts with ownership and to never be afraid to ask for ownership never be afraid to include that in your contract and never be afraid to protect your ownership even when you're doing business with friends my mom said always protect your your ownership so or your or yourself and so yeah my mom uh, i was very lucky to have family members and not just my mom even my grandma like i just had a family that like really understood business so they made sure to like talk to me about these things as at a very young age and instill it and I didn't fully I didn't I I, I grasped it but I would say I didn't fully grasp it until just a couple years ago but there's a lot of like learning because I was also someone who um you know I was, I'm a very kind person and I definitely had people take advantage of me um and it's very hard too because it's like you know as a woman it's like when men ask for ownership or when, when men do certain things, it's like Harold, right? But if a woman does it, oh, she's complicated. 
or she's whatever, right? Difficult. Uh, difficult, yes. Um, but then I think I got, when I got to the point where I just stopped caring what people thought about me, like, I think that's when I truly owned, like, ownership. It wasn't afraid to ask for ownership. I, like, I dead ass ask for ownership in every single, like, depending on what it is, obviously, but, like, for the most part, if it's with a company, like, or something where they're really going to use my face and really use my image, oh, I straight up ask for stock and ownership. I'm, like, I tell my agents, too, I'm, like, yo, ask for that. Even though they say, oh, they may say no. I was like, I don't care. Ask for that. Because what if they say yes? It's a win, right? So I got to that point later on in my life, but my mom really instilled it in me. Yeah, she's from from day one, it's been ownership, ownership. So like, even like- Yep, because let's talk about co-owner because you are a (laughs) co-owner. She is. Right? So she ain't playing with the ownership. X X set? X set, yep. It's like like dip set, but X set. (laughs) Exit, exit, exit. Yep. Yep. So put us on game. So people who are not familiar with what yes. that is and you know how you even got into that position. Let's mm-hmm. talk a little bit about it. Oh man. Okay. So Exet is a new esports organization. For those who don't know what esports is, it's competitive gaming. Um, and uh it started a couple of, a couple of months ago. Mm-hmm. And Basically, uh, it was started by uh, several execs who originally came from another popular esports org called FaZe Clan. They wanted to really create an org that was uh, conducive of, it well, really included diversity and inclusion. And um, so when they were doing it, I actually, um, <laughs> it's so weird. It's so weird to like bring up his name because people in music know who he is, but like people in gaming have, they're just like, wait, what? Um, Clinton Sparks, he if he's a very notable DJ, uh, has been involved in music industry for a very long time, and he works in the esports and gaming space now. And so, I became friends with him, and he hit me up. He's like, "Hey, we're starting something new. Like, I, you need to come. Like, you need to be part of it. Like, you have to." And I'm just like, and I've always trusted his business judgment. So I was like, "Yeah, of course. Let me hear more about it." So I heard more about it. I was like, "This is dope." Um, and then I was just like. You know, I want ownership. Can I have ownership? I just straight up asked. And I told him that. I was like, yo, Clinton, I'm only going to do it if I can get ownership. I was like, I, this is something that's always been at the core of me. I'm trying to instill this in my future. This is what I want. And they were cool with it. And so they gave me ownership. So I'm part of the ownership group. Uh, What a lot of people don't know is over 50% of the owners, and it's probably going to expand later on, but over 50% of the owners of this esports org are people of color and women. And so it they really are practicing what they're preaching. And so for me, that was very important. I'm very particular with what brands I work with and who I work with. And uh, and so for the fact that like they when I asked for ownership and they didn't even bat it, like they didn't even bat an eye, they just said yes. Like it was never, it was never a problem or let's talk. They were like, yeah, absolutely. And so I've been part of it and I've been helping them grow and we've been really moving and progressing. We've had some really great sponsorships. We announced a partnership with Quality Control. For those who don't know, Quality Control has the catalog of Cardi B, the Migos and others. Um, and uh, so we're going to be doing stuff with them. There's some other companies and, and partnerships and stuff that we're working on as well. And so it's been great because once again, I'm able to bring the worlds of all my passions, right? Music, sports, gaming, entertainment, all in one and bring a lot of the relationships that I have from all these industries to, 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 to help give that, to help give back and also to create a company or that's going to make an impact. And we've been making an impact in just such a short amount of time. And so it's been awesome. We're, and we have some really great news out I don't know if the news is going to drop around this time, but we're going to have some really great news soon. So if you're listening, you may want to check it out later on. But um, but yeah, so like ownership is just always my thing. Ownership and then if not ownership, long-term relationship. So I'm not really keen on like one-offs really, unless it makes sense. But like there's a lot of times companies will hit me up and be like, hey, like, oh, like for example, the smallest thing, they'll be like, hey, uh, can we pay you to do an IG post? And I'm just kind of like, no, but unless it makes sense, right? I've done one-offs before, but it really has to make sense for me. Like for me, I'm just like, I'm at a point in my career where I'm influential, where, you know, I'm someone that a lot of content creators and people look up to or look for advice or anything. And for me, it's like, I want to set that example of just like, it's not about chasing the check. It's about creating generational wealth. 
and where do you start with that? And it's um, if you are going to get checks, it's about consistent long-term checks. And then it's also about ownership and equity, passive and active income. And so I've been really working with my team to, to increase that on so many different folds, whether it's the investment in this org where, you know, if it does really well, I could see over a million dollars like 10 years from now, right? Or, um, you know, if it's a, a sponsorship with a brand, I don't just look at a one year. I mean, of course, I always start out with one year, but I, all the brands that I'm sponsored with, I, to be transparent, I've been talking to all of them about multi-year deals following the one-year contract. So I'm not, you know, for me, it's like I want to be very specific with who I work with and whoever I work with. I want it to be an actual long-term relationship. And then also I do tell every single company that I work with or work for, I tell them, if you do not want to give back, especially to people of color, I don't want to work with you. Like, that's it. I'm, you're, you're either on board with my diversity and inclusion initiative or I don't work with you. That's it. And, but all the brands and companies, they're, they're all for it. But it's like, I'm just at a point now where I was like, I, I understand my impact. I understand my influence. Especially I'm one of the few Afro-Latinas on camera for esports and gaming. Like I, I'm one of the very few gaming people in a Super Bowl commercial. So I know my influence, right? So I'm not afraid to ask and, to, and, and request certain things. Um, and I'm not afraid of being viewed as difficult because I'm not difficult to work with. I just don't tolerate certain things anymore. That's the difference. Um, and so, you know, I've been able to build my credibility to really hone in on that ownership, long-term projects, long-term revenue, and just working towards building an empire. And then on top of that, I've been talking to CAA about, hey, I have goals of owning my own production company. Hey, I want to go on a TV show. Hey, I want to do this. How do we get there? I've never been someone who's like, oh, I can't. And CAA, in my agency, CAA has never told me, oh, you can't do that. I'm always like, all right, what's next? What do I need to do? I'm like, yo, I want, I want this, 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 this. How do we get there? Can you please start it? Hey, I want my own nonprofit. Where, how do we start? What do I need to do? Like, I'm, I, I work them. <laughs> I work my agents, but they never say no to me. They never say, I can't do it. So I'm so appreciative of my team that they believe in my big dreams and goals. All right, let me be off topic a little bit. You said you were Aries. Let me guess, are you a March Aries? Now I'm an April Aries. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Okay. Cause March Aries be bossy. That's how I would say. Like y'all don't, oh, y'all don't yeah. like. But Aries don't play overall. It's just like <laughs> nah, they got it. Bro. Why can't I get it? But it's interesting because it's like, like you said, it's like people want your influence. They want your. They want your audience. You know, they want to tap into your audience. And you're like, listen, you might say I'm easy to deal with. I'll just let you know I'm not easy to play with. Cut the check. Give me what I'm worth because they will definitely take advantage of you. So you, you, you really demand that there's diversity as far as in the way that they partner with you, the way they give back. Um, so with, with the like um, XSET being, you said it's over 50% people of color and women, right? Part of the ownership group, yep. So, okay, so that's the ownership group. What would you say as far as in like the participants overall? Like, how do you, or even with the ownership group, is it like a thing of like, you really vet it as far as like, you're like, mm, we really don't need that many more to be like Frank, white men at the yeah. table. Oh, my, the CEO and the team are very aware of that. Like I've been in meetings with other, I've been in some of them in the, um, in quote unquote investment meetings in terms of like people we would love to have be a part of the organization. And so I, I see it firsthand. Also, we are, we are increasing just like our talent and it's, oh, another thing too, what a lot of people don't know, I, I am now a part of that process of the evaluation of content creators and influencers for our org. So I am part of that process as well. And so I, I told, you know, I've had many conversations with, with our high up, especially our CEO and, and, uh, I can tell you for a fact, I can say this. I am someone who is definitely pushing to, to, to find, um, because obviously it is it partially, I mean, I'll keep it a buck. It is a business too, but I am trying to find uh, another black woman who can really, who really epitomizes what we are. Um, 
and working towards finding one who can really like push the envelope um even more even beyond just me right <laughs> so um <laughs> so we we are like i'm very for me i'm very aware like there are talents in so many different communities like i'm even looking at the latin community like fully spanish speaking community uh portuguese speaking community like i'm i'm looking everywhere because um i want i want exet to be international and i want exet to be global um and these are just some of the things that i look for right because I, I i i always look at all different talents and i'm always looking for other amazing um black women black men latin because for me i don't want to like i i appreciate being like the like a face but yeah. i don't want to be the only one like i i kick this dang door down i want more <laughs> to come after right because i'm not gonna be doing this broadcast like i'm not trying to be like i'm not trying to be like I don't want to be like 40 years old doing esports broadcasting. I just, I don't. Right. So yeah. I'm really, as I'm growing, I'm, I'm looking at the talent and seeing who has the potential to be great. Like mm -hmm. who has the potential to, to really take things further than what I have. Right. And so I'm constantly looking at that and looking at what, and, and that's why I also give out free information. Like I give free information on my social media. I've, recommended lawyers to content creators like I'm always um whenever I wherever I can help where I'm not like overdoing and overwhelming myself I will do just because sometimes it only takes that one opportunity that one advice or that one person to help someone find their greatness or find their potential and I had someone do that for me and so that's the least that I could do for someone else like I could literally I like I could literally tweet something that's an advice and it was something that someone was stuck on for like years and then they saw that and it clicked and now they're going to do amazing. Right. Because I've learned over time. Some of the most successful people are the ones that help other people. And so, and I'm also someone who genuinely helps people too. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I always tell people at the end of the day, like it's a business, but there are ways that you can help people while still treating things as a business. It's, you know, without dehumanizing mm -hmm. the industry, you know, I got to keep it. I have to keep it a, like a buck and real when it comes to some business stuff. But there are ways that I could still give back. And there still are things that I can do to humanize the industry and to bring value to people in the industry. Uh, Josh, this is kind of a random thing. You remember uh, uh, Anthony? Uh, the pilot? Uh, yeah. My aunt, yeah. His name, or his, I mean, it may not, be, it's probably not him, but his name's trending on Twitter. And that just got me super. What? Yeah, that got moment? me super distracted. I don't, I don't know who it is, but the name Anthony Padilla came up, and I was just like, "What?" But That's it's something crazy. else. That kind of creeped me out a little bit. I was like, "Oh my god, why is he?" <laughs> that is crazy. crazy. Somebody starts trending, and you, you're like, "Uh oh, what's happening?" <laughs> exactly. I know, right? I was like, "Oh, what is going on?" That That's I was like, yeah. mm, but <laughs> sorry, I got distracted for a second. No, it, it just shows. Okay. No, it shows that you tapped in. She's always like you that. fully tapped in right here and you you given the code, you know what I mean? And that's the thing they say is like when you when you know the codes, it's about giving it away. And a mm -hmm. part of it is that, like you're saying, humanizing the industry, you're like, okay, it's still a business, but communicating to people that this is still a business and this is how you can attack this to get your, you know, get your foot in the door and yeah. to take it to where you need to take it. Yeah. But don't don't get caught up and thinking that these people are your friends or they want necessarily what's best for you. They want what's best for their bottom line, you know? Um, so that's really, so out of everything that you've done so far in your mm -hmm. career, what would you say is your biz your biggest accomplishment? <sighs> like, and, and, and maybe, cause you, you sound like you have like a really holistic, organic like outlook on it. So maybe you might be like inspiring people given the code. So it, yeah. it doesn't have to necessarily be something that's quantifiable. Overall. Yeah. Uh, I think the biggest, the biggest, I think the biggest accomplishment for me is the ability to help inspire or change people's lives. Like I get, like, I've definitely have gotten like, I, so there is someone, I, I don't want to put their name out there, but I got a message from someone and they told me. Um, and it was like my first time, like in interacting with them. And, uh, you know, they were like, Hey, there was a time in my life where I was going through some personal stuff and it was, it was a very low period for me. Um, 
but I, you know, but I had, I think it was, uh, they were able to see the show that I was a part of called Cheddar Esports before. And they were like, every day they tuned in because the energy and the personality that I gave, it made them, it made them feel like I was like, I was connecting with them. And they literally told me watching you and watching you having a good time and talking about gaming, everything like you helped me through a hard time. And so for me, I didn't even know that. And there are people that are like, Aaron, like your streams or your content or just you, just watching you has helped me through a hard time or helped me figure something out or help. Or I even had someone who is like killing it on TikTok right now. And he was like, yo, thank you for, for encouraging me and, and answer my question and, and, and really motivating me to go and do this. Because I, I think they were a little like, they were worried about numbers and, and kind of were afraid. And I just said, yo, just do it. Like the worst thing that can happen, it doesn't work. So just go do it. And now they're killing it on TikTok. And they literally told me, hey, if it wasn't for talking to you, I don't know if I would have done this. And it's just like, you know, even if it, you know, whether it's inspiring them through the work that I do, or just even being like, hey, just go and do it. <laughs> sometimes that's, like I said, that's all sometimes people need. Cause some people don't have the support group in their lives. So I'm very fortunate that I did. But not everyone does. And sometimes all it takes is just one person to say, yo, I believe you can do it. Go and do it. If you have any questions, I'm here. And and for me, that's like the biggest accomplishment I think I personally have made. So you definitely exude giving back, like knowing that's one of the things that you want to do. Um, for me, I feel like you just being able to give free game, you know, I, I find you accessible because you're my friend, <laughs> but like, I know that you, <laughs> you have the time for people. Like, I, I think that's no. a conception that a lot of people have about people who are successful or like, you know, deep in their career. Sometimes they feel like, oh, that person's unapproachable. I can't, you know, contact that person. I say, well, I will say one of the things about you is that you're always open for new people who have questions or want to know things that are going on or how can I get a leg up or what can I know about this that like you very much give back to the community that you've, you've created or, or, or been bred in. And I think my question for you would be yes. if you were giving back to your younger self, yes. who was just about to start her own personal journey, what would you let her know? Mm. I would let her know it gets better because I definitely gone through uh, some personal struggles. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was weird, even through like the depression, anxiety I dealt with when I was younger, I was always like very positive, like even through like my hard times, I was like, it's going to get better. And it really did. Um, but I think with that, I would tell myself like, <laughs> to be actually, to be honest, I, I would tell my younger stuff, my younger self, yo, you go to therapy now. <laughs> like, um, cause I was always like a therapy kid. I went in and out of therapy, um, starting, when, starting with when my parents divorced. Um, but I never, there's a certain period of time when I was younger, I just never made time for it. Yeah. And I feel, I would have told myself, hey, start this now. Because I feel like I was already in that uh kind of like healing period and self-discovery and self-acceptance all like I was already in that process and like I was doing it on my own but I definitely would have been able to get it sooner and um been able to heal a lot quicker if I did it earlier but I you know but I, I don't regret it because I feel like you know, I think in life, there, there are some things that are supposed to happen when they happen and things happen for a reason. And, you know, this was one of those things for me. It's maybe I had to put the work in myself mm. to then be able to get someone else to help me even further. Um, or there's just certain things I had to realize on my own. And so I, but I would have definitely have told myself to, to go to therapy earlier um, to really work through these things that it took me a while to work through. Probably that would be the one thing I would say to myself, my younger self or gift to my younger self. I, I would, I would pay for my therapy session. That'll be my gift for my younger <laughs> self. It's expensive, man. <laughs> yeah. and here go. And here's the one. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, no, I mean, that's knowing the personal journey that you've gone through. I mean, it says a lot and it, it really can be attributed. Like you are right within, I think we saw the time the Lauren Hill verse, like you, 
uh, you can't win if you ain't right within. Like you definitely have making sure you, you've you mm -hmm. gotten right within to make sure you win on the outside and you can share that story, um, which is incredible. I think, um, you know, we always like to get to the fun stuff toward the end of the podcast how we talk about oh wait one more For thing the fun Is stuff there? i got one question go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. okay <laughs> all right because it's like this is i mean you don't even understand like my brother is like he was always a game like like we grew up in a gaming family my son was a heavy gamer to his grades i was like listen kid we better get it together because <laughs> But if I had known about it before, I'd have been like, boy, you better go do some eSports. <laughs> <laughs> go make some money, boy. It's okay. You can, you can get it. But, like, my brother was such a, a gamer, anime head. Like, I'm talking about anime characters. His My niece is, like, named that they're an anime character. All seven Dragon Balls tattooed on them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's real, right? Be real, so, real about it. So looking at, like, for the young black kids now who mm -hmm. may be looking at trying to get into esports or like starting their own league, right? Mm -hmm. Because is that what like powers it? Is like people have their teams in their leagues and then how does it work? So it's it's kind of like sports, right? So yeah. in sports you have like like you have like the AAUs, the little leagues, right? Then you have college you have pros you have amateur scene that's kind of what's helped like developing these sports like there actually are now scholarships for for college for kids to compete as well as go to school um so there's there's different there's different spaces um and different ways that different leagues are, are ran like how the NFL runs is different from how Major League Baseball runs, right? It's the sure. same thing. Like, so it's like, it's like if you have one video game title, it, like, let's just figure, like, just to kind of explain it a little more simple, I guess, easier is like one video game, let's just say, like, runs like the NFL. Another video game is going to run differently, like how Major League Baseball does. Another one's going to run differently, like how soccer does. Oh, so leagues are like, or like the game. Oh, I, I, that makes sense because it's like mm -hmm. we are competitively playing this game. Yeah. And then, of course, the rules and everything that goes under and how to, the teams and stuff mm -hmm. go kind of from there is kind of controlled via game. Well, yeah. And it has like different terminology. The same way that or, sports, like every sport has its different terminology. They have like their different rules. There's some similarities across the leagues, but it's still, it still has its own different, unique community. So it's very uh, much, it's very similar to traditional sports in that sense. So, the one so thing for like a young black kid, he, he might be like, look, I want to, I'm trying to, or she, she might be like, look, I'm trying to start a league. Me and my friends, yeah. <laughs> we're playing X game and like, we're good. I think we could take, we could do some things. What would be your advice of like where they should start, where they stand? Mm -hmm. Um. Honestly, a lot of these kids start on their own. Like, this is an industry that is very much driven by the youth. Um, you there, there are platforms where you can do your own tournaments. There are um, competitive scene, like com competitions that you can sign up for. Um, there are platforms where you can learn. Like my friend Eunice has a platform called Enlight where you can actually learn from industry professionals. There are platforms like, e it's a one called eFuse, which is kind of like the LinkedIn for gamers. Um, you honestly, like it, it, there's, there's more opportunities that are being developed and more accessibility. Like, like Riot Games was one of the biggest publishers in the world is now like working with HBCUs. Um, there actually are esports league for historically black colleges now. Um, so there's different ways. There's different paths. Ultimately, it's like, what does the kid want to do? And I think I think the most important thing is like for any kid that, or, or even parents, it's like understanding that there's more than just professionally playing. Like there are jobs, there are opportunities, there are sponsorship dollars. Like actually, one of the players that we signed to Exit, his name is Astonish. He literally saved his parents house with the money from one tournament he played one tournament was able to pay for the mortgage and everything saved the house and now he's like a top fortnite player um so there there are opportunities and i think that like i think it's le i think it's less about 
where the kids should start, to be honest, because a lot of these kids, like their friends play Fortnite, they all talk, they, you know, they do these things. I think the most important thing is the parents understanding, like the parents understanding that like how the youth treats video games, it's like how they treat soccer or football or basketball. Like kids can, can go pro, not all of them, but it doesn't mean that that passion for gaming can't turn to them wanting to go to school for game development or be a graphic designer or be on the business side, right? There, I, I deal with so many corporations because of esports. Like there are opportunities. It's, it's more so for the parents to understand there are different routes and for them to um, find ways to open up the kids to other possibilities. Cause you know, little Johnny was probably not gonna make the NBA and he may not make esports, but he can work in a league. He can work for Activision Blizzard. He can work for Riot Games. He can work for the NBA for their esports league, right? So there's, there are different paths and, and different things that can be done. And the kids can also go to school and learn business and learn journalism and learn degrees that are already there and just apply it to their passion. So a lot of times it's not so much about telling the, where the kids need to start. It's more so just like, letting the parents know there are other opportunities and, and letting them know like, Hey, like gaming is not a waste of time. Like gaming is just like everything else. Too much of anything is bad, but like if your kid has a passion or interest or is really good at gaming, don't shoot it down. Like just like help to just expand their horizon. Because if my mom wasn't supportive of gaming, I wouldn't be where I'm at. I wouldn't be doing the things that I'm doing. I wouldn't have been getting sponsored by Puma. Like, and that seemed impossible for me when I was younger. Like, I never thought I was gonna get sponsored by one of the biggest, you know, apparel sneakerwear companies, right? But it was made possible because of my passion for gaming. So it's just like, you can't shoot things down that you don't understand. Like take the time to understand this space. There's, there are opportunities in this area in this industry and it's going to increase as they get older too. Yeah, I think it's unique in that same sense. Like it's youth driven. It's something that you, to, to I think everybody who played games mm -hmm. knew that this boom was coming. It was just waiting for somebody to actually sit down and take it seriously. You know what I mean? Like I've, me and I've gamed with Aaron, like me and Aaron have gamed back in the day. Like everybody ha has those relationships. And I think, um, I don't know if I told, I told you guys, but like one of my biggest things is like, there's storytelling within gaming. Oh yeah. Like video games win, you know, video game of the year based on their storytelling and their content. And like, that's what makes me a gamer. I play video games where I've, there are some video games that have better stories than any movie I saw that year, which is, which is nuts. I think for me, one of the things that I want to do, I would love to find a way to get into that capacity, like storytelling within gaming or make a VR movie. That's on my like bucket list of things to do. I want to make a movie where you can actually watch the movie and interact in the movie in, in VR. Um, and when we look at it, like the history of games, all games have their story, right? Yeah. Mario then it's like Legend, I mean, but like Legend of Zelda is yeah. so classic because of the role playing in the, the story that it, it led through. Mm-hmm. It's so crazy. It's so unique. And it's, I, I'm happy that, you know, it's getting its time, it's getting its forefront and becoming an industry in itself. Um, wow. It's yeah. almost like a, a frontier kind of like how maybe our grandparents couldn't understand great grandparents, like the um, music industry and how lucrative and how many jobs there were in it. And then later people was like, oh, well film, but it's kind of look at it as like a hobby type thing. And you're like, oh, this is, you don't get it. You yeah. don't get what's in there. Wow. It's crazy. It's super crazy. Wow. wow. So, so Aaron, um, this is where we get to the hard stuff, you know, the stuff that really <laughs> that, you, that you aren't prepared <laughs> for. Um, so we want to ask you a couple, you know, a couple of different mm -hmm. things. And I know yes. that you're a music buff, a video game buff. So what I want to know is if you could, well, two things. One, if you could pick an album and or mixtape to describe where you are in your life right now, what would it be? Oh, wow. And if you had to play one video game for the rest of your life, what would it be? And <sighs> hmm. <laughs> J 
Josh just smiles, smiles during this because he's like, I got him, I got him. Oh, this the one. Home. He just looking like ready for everything know. else except for this one. Uh okay, so I think for album. Um okay, so I think this album is something that highlights the the the, the, the change in thought and perspective that I'm in right now, especially when it comes to life and business, um, is uh, Jay-Z's uh, 444 album. Mm. Um, I think that the mindset of ownership, the mindset of, you know, the value that you have and don't let them play you, that no matter how su- successful you get, you're still black at the end of the day. They're still going to treat you black. Like these are things that really showcase how I'm viewing business and how I'm viewing life and how I'm viewing different things. Like I very much speak up against racism, sexism, all the isms. I have no problem speaking up about political stuff in gaming. And I know a lot of people are like, stick to just gaming. And it's like a transitional period. We're seeing a lot of like broadcasters and people who are speaking up saying, no, we're going to talk about this because it's important. And you either deal with it or you can just leave. Like I'm not, I'm a human being. I'm not just someone for your entertainment. Yes. And that's the kind of perspective and space that I'm in right now where I'm unapologetically black and I'm unapologetically myself. And so that's why I think that that album is kind of like a little bit of a representation of where I am. Mm. Um, video game. So video game that I would play the rest of my life. Is that what you said? Yeah, you had to play one. Mm. I'm going to pick Grand Theft Auto because it's open world. Like there's so <laughs> much you can do in that game. Yeah. And the fact that like you can mod it. Like I actually know a... I interviewed a, a streamer. He is he is a retired policeman mm. who plays as a policeman in Grand Theft Auto. Like he literally wow. goes around the map arresting people and like there's so much you can do. And that's kind of like where gaming going. It's like a very much of an open world concept. I know there was news not, uh, not too long ago about an open world concept for Star Wars, and I'm kind of looking forward to that. That's the one for uh, Netflix, actually, too, which is not. Yeah, that came out. So like this open world capacity, like I could definitely play that game. I could play any uh, any any really good open world video games. Yeah. I could literally play it for forever because there's so much that you can do with it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Absolutely. Like Grand Theft Auto off the chain. You'd be like, I'm going to get iced tea at the mini market real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to run over this grandma. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> uh, absolutely. All right. So what are three things you keep on you at all times? Uh, my cell phone, chapstick, and my credit card. So. <laughs> Always ready to go. What's, oh. your, ready? What's your morning routine? Working out. I go on the elliptical machine. I do that for about 15, 20 minutes. Then I lift weights. I always have to start the day off with working out or meditation and reflection or um, uh, affirmations. Mm. Mm. So with all that going on, you know, you, you, you have all this. How do you maintain balance? I say no to people more. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, but seriously, I, I do. I think for me... It was never like time management, time management and management. It was never an issue I had. I think for me, it was, I always had a difficult time like saying no, because I, I felt bad. I want to help people, but I've realized like, I can't help people if I don't help myself and I got to keep myself balanced. And so I learn to start saying no to people and not because I didn't want to help people, but like I had to create balance. I had to create boundaries and better boundaries so that I myself, my well being, my mental state, my emotional state is good. And when that is good, I can do more for others. So I just had to start saying no to people and things and opportunities a lot more in order to have that balance so I can be my best self. And, and it protect your capacity. Love mm-hmm. that. Yeah. So, all right. So what, what like fuels your creative juices? What like keeps you feeling creative and like, wow, like inventing and, you know, innovating. I spent a lot, I spent a lot of time 
looking at things outside of gaming. Like I gain inspiration from whether it's going for a walk or looking at art, listening to music, watching watching documentaries. I I get inspired by everything. And I always tell people some of the biggest inspirations can come from like things outside of what you do, right? Because you could see what someone else is doing and figure out how can I apply that to my industry or what I'm doing. Um, I read, I, you know, I, 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 there's inspiration everywhere. I always tell people, you can find inspiration in any place and anywhere. You just got to open up your eyes and your ears enough to hear, listen, and see it. And I also get inspiration of by trying new things, mm. whether it's new food, new activities, new games, new music. I've there's inspiration in, in all these different things and influences in all these different things. You just have to be open-minded enough to take, take that information and take that experience in. Do you have, all right, so like Bob Marley played soccer and he's like that helped clear his mind for music. Yeah. Um, Martin Luther King Jr. played pool. Is there anything you do that's like a good mind clearing thing that helps you maybe get more capacity or just like zone? Yeah. Uh, two things, listening to music, um, and, and watching, sh- like watching stuff on Netflix. Um, I actually really love watching documentaries. Um, I, I also watch like international shows and anime and I just like, or even like uh, one of the things I really that really clears my mind, but I just obviously seasonal wise I can't do. Um, water, like water, calms me. Whether it is like me, it's so weird for me to say, it, but like I like meditate when I'm taking a shower because just the constant sound of the water just gets me into that state. Or like laying in the ocean and just if it just clears my mind, like I've always been a water person and it's always been something that's has soothed me in some shape or form. It's a Latina. <laughs> <laughs> so that's crazy. Cause it's like showers and doing the dishes for me. And I thought it was just, but it, it, it's probably the water. You know? mm-hmm. This it's probably like, is yeah. that it's like they're repetitive. It's almost like when it rains, it's very calming just hearing it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> you have a weekend to yourself. What does your weekend look like? Sleeping. Okay. I, that was, I, I had a, my brain <laughs> was tied between two things. So this is Aaron's motto. I would, I'll tell you, so it's either sleeping because that girl can sleep. <laughs> <I'll tell you laughs> or two, work hard, play hard. Aaron lives by work hard, play hard. Oh, like, yeah. Like that, 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 <laughs> like, I just worked two weeks. I had no break. Josh, we're going to New York. Yeah. Pack a bag. We out. I was like, all right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. It is. So. Yeah, I definitely I played hard this past weekend. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it, okay, Josh, I'm gonna let you get the next question. All right. Um, or is it the final question? I'll do the next. I'll do the next one. You get the final. How about that? All right. Cool. All right. Who inspires you, and what keeps your heart beating? Or what, like you know, inspiration slash what keeps your heart beating? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who inspires me i'm gonna try and think of another answer to this because i do like i always say my mom and she really does but that's my mama i know she's somewhere back there <laughs> uh, yeah she probably she probably back there somewhere uh I'm trying to think of someone else that could work for this i want to switch up my answer a little bit um my friends oh. my close friends yeah no, really, because like, like Josh, you, Julius, Kim have been like my ride or dies. And you guys honestly like have never judged me for anything. And I've always have had such an open mind and open heart. Um, and it inspires me because it always shows it, it tells me that there always there, there are good people out there. You know, I think sometimes granted there are not so good people but i realize that sometimes like all you need are like those just three good people in your life and that's all you need and like you guys have really you guys have really helped me with like me accepting myself yeah. and so 
that's why like you guys inspire me and I see how like you guys are working hard and you guys are trying to achieve your goals and we I know we always have conversations about life and all these different things and I think that like you know you guys really inspire me to to keep going and to and to 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 be a good influence and to help people because you guys show me that you know there are good people out there and if there's a way that what I do, whether it's via friendships or achieving goals or whatever, there's a way for me to support people like you guys. Like for me, that's like super, super important. So yeah. you guys have really like during my difficult time have really instilled in me like, hey, there are good people because I've been around a lot of people that just didn't treat me right. But like the second you guys came in my lives, like you guys always treated me right and treated me with respect. And so that really showed me like what actual real friendships are um and so because you guys are always being good friend to me i wish i'd be good friend to you <laughs> so you guys really inspire me in that sense and then um what was it what was the other question sorry my brain is like a little question. late <laughs> <laughs> it was the same question in one like you know who inspires you or keeps your heart beating so oh he keeps my heart beating okay. like what do you do it for, do it for him. my family yeah. i do it for my family man my family's worked hard i mean like my mom and my family worked hard to get me to, to give me a better life. Yeah. Um, you know, originally my family left Puerto Rico and went to bed far Rockaway. And if anyone knows those areas back in the eighties and seventies, it was not the same as place. Right. So they do it that bed <laughs> Yeah. And my, my grandma was a single mother and, you know, they she worked hard. My mom worked hard. So it's like, they did all of that to give us a better life. And all, and all, pretty much all, all my family members worked really hard to, to create better lives for the kids. So for me, it's like they did all of that and went through hard times in New York to get me here. I can't slack off. Like now I got to get to the point where I can take care of them. Like if, if, if Mama Simon wants a beach house in Puerto Rico, I'm gonna buy that. Like, <laughs> she, she deserves it, and she deserves it. Like she said, when when you get big, buy, just buy me a beach house. I'm like, bet, okay. Like, I work hard for that because I I do like, you know, I, I I didn't struggle in the sense of like financially, right? Um, because we were pretty middle kind of middle little lower middle class um but I do remember the times when like my mom was uh did raise us as a single mother and like her dealing with her health plus working late hours plus taking us to soccer and basketball practice and doing all these things to make sure that we would be set up for success um I want to one do that for my family and two I want to be able to, to, to give back and help my, my family, my parents. Like, I don't ever want my mom to, to worry about finances ever again. So like whatever she wants, I'm gonna buy it. <laughs> like that's, that's where I want to get to. So that my family is like everything to me and that is what influences me. And then that's also what shapes everything about what I do, who I am. I'm very much a family person and not, and when I say family, it's not just blood. Like Josh, your family, like I got friends, I got people who are family to me because I don't be- I don't believe in like only blood relatives are family. No, I just there are people in your lives who are truly your family who are kind of like your your like to say like you know how they say I have like soulmates. There are people that are like your friends, mate. There are people who are meant to be in your lives forever, yeah. and so that's why like that kind of energy that hard work but also that kindness and compassion that really was influenced by my family my i think i mean josh you can attest to it like my family treats all my friends like family yeah. like they so, really my mom does all the house time. And I eat. <laughs> they feed me they yeah that has feed we need a place to stay yeah. like my mom's always treating my close friends as family and that's the kind of energy that i treat and i and, and the kindness and the compassion and that that was instilled in me for my family and the hard work. And so that's influenced me to kind of bring that and instill that and, and give that to other people as well. As soon as you said it, I, I, I hear everything in lyrics, especially rap lyrics. All I heard was Drake, all oh, this happened for myself and my family. I'm like, <laughs> as soon as you said, I was like, huh. All right. So we're going to end it on this question because, yes. you know, as we said, you know, we're, this podcast is guided by curiosity, right? 
and curiosity about the world just like right next to us, our friends. And sometimes we have people who we don't explore their lives enough or we're looking, we say, you know, people need to know about my friend. They need to know what's going on because they're really doing some major things. And that's why we consider you a disruptor. Um, but for you, what does it mean to you to be a disruptor? To be a disruptor is to not be confined by society's boxes. Like to be a disruptor is someone who, when someone tells you you can't, you can. When tell, someone tells you who you are, you define who you are. When someone says like, you can only jump this high, you jump to the stars. Like a disruptor is someone who does not allow society to confine them to the to the comfortable boxes that they've instilled because either based off of their their lack of understanding, what they're not comfortable with, or what they believe cannot possibly happen. You know, all of the major disruptors are people who were themselves when others didn't want them to be themselves. Went against the status quo when everyone was going against the status quo. Achieved great things when everyone said they couldn't. A disruptor never allows someone to dictate who they are or what they can do or where they can go. They never get trapped into those boxes. They're kind of like, they're like, they're like birds. They're out here flying and in the sky and the sky, you know, to them, it's, it's limitless. Right. So those are the disruptors. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> a whole lot. A whole lot. Dang, Aaron. Well, I, again, I appreciate you so much for, for coming here. You always, you always have a lot to say. You always I've always stood on who you were and have dropped knowledge and given back and have been a pioneer in everything that you've done. Um, again, I'm not just saying that because I'm your friend, but I get to witness, you know, other people's reactions and how you make other people feel and the light that you shine. So big shout out to you. Much, much love. Um, for everybody who's listening, can you let them know where they can find you, follow you, mm -hmm. see your content, everything that yeah. you do? Yeah, you can follow me at Aaron A. Simon on all my social media platforms, or you can just go to Josh's account, and I'm sure I'm there somewhere. <laughs> Hiding in the comments. I had to, <laughs> I had to do that. Sorry. <laughs> so Listen, thank no, you I, so much. Like I'm, yeah. I'm inspired. I'm charged up. I'm just like, <laughs> no, you know, it's an, another person's walk. Like none of our walks are the same. They won't be. You know, our journey is never the same but we can glean inspiration from someone else's journey, strength, you know what I mean? Great advice and expanding our minds, right? Cause you just, you expanded my mind a lot around just esports itself. I might've missed my meal ticket. My son <laughs> <have> been something. <laughs> like, damn. Oh, damn. I, I don't play these games, I'm gonna be a score. Oh, come back. <laughs> You know, and it is just, it is a real broadening of the horizon. It's yeah. like for every product and everything that we use, there is an industry around it, yeah. but you have to be able to see it. And that's, um, that's what I, I would say you're a disruptor because you're a visionary, because you could see things that other people couldn't. And now you're able to share that and communicate that to people in a way. So we, I, I'm just, I'm grateful that you came and shared this, like, you know, this wisdom with everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys so much for having me a part of this. This is this is fun, and uh, I this is really cool too because usually like Josh is always around like the broadcast and podcast that I do, and this is my yeah. first time like on mine. Like, like, you know, his, so this is like a, this is like a new thing for me. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm <man>. loving it. <laughs> you got the show inside of you. People don't get to see. You know, I really I really want to. You know, like Amir said, we highlight. We want people mm -hmm. to see that from our, our friends and the, and the creators that we touch. So definitely. Absolutely. Wanna, Thank you guys again. Yeah, thank you. With that, please thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Disruptors in the Culture. Subscribe, like, follow, um, check and us share. out. Share. Yeah, please share. Um, social media at Disruptors ITC in the culture. You know, we'd love to hear your comments, anything. Reach out to us. Um, we're approachable too, I promise. And with that, you know, we bid you adieu. Take care, everybody. Hey, this is Amira Smith, co-host of the Disruptors in the Culture podcast. You could be anywhere in the world right now on any video in the world, but you're here watching us. Thank you. Like, subscribe, and share. Check out our next episode. Tell us what you think in the comments.